The Seaboard operates in a number of modes, and depending on what you're trying to do, you may want to switch modes while you're playing or composing. You can toggle between modes by pressing the power button on the bottom left-hand side of the Seaboard. The button should either be cyan or white, indicating which mode you're currently in. The first is expression mode. If the power button is cyan, then you're in expression mode. When in this mode, the three touch faders on the left of the Seaboard will adjust the sensitivity of glide, slide, and press. Each fader has an icon at the top which visually represents the gesture it's assigned to by default. You can take your finger and run it up and down the fader to raise or lower the sensitivity, or else tap anywhere to quickly jump around. Open up Equator and audition a few of the presets and experiment with adjusting the sensitivity of the faders to make sounds. It's easy to forget that digital technologies like the Seaboard can actually adjust to us as opposed to the other way around. Most of the time when we're using a new controller or playing a new instrument, we spend a lot of time adjusting to it. And it takes a certain amount of time to wrap our hands around this action or the way it plays. Being in control of how an instrument plays is synonymous with good technique. And it's one of the things that separates a good player from a great player. Since the Seaboard is so interconnected with the way your hands move, it does create somewhat of a challenge when developing a technique. Every move you make will shape the sound. Use the touch faders to help the Seaboard meet you halfway with your technique. If you're having a hard time playing in tune, turn the glide sensitivity down. If you tap at the very bottom of the fader, you'll see the light right in the middle of the fader illuminated, which indicates that expressive control for that gesture has been disabled. When they are all disabled, we're in piano mode, and the Seaboard functions like a regular MIDI controller. Let's navigate to preset number two and see this in action. The second mode on the Seaboard is MIDI mode. If the power button is illuminated white, then we're in MIDI mode and the touch faders will work like traditional mod wheels, which can be assigned to any number of parameters. In the same preset in MIDI mode, I can map the faders by clicking on the area where it says rise controls. It will illuminate yellow, indicating to me that it is selected. Then I'll click on the fader that I'd like to assign and it will also illuminate yellow, which means it's ready to be mapped. From there, I just choose whatever parameter I'd like to be assigned to the fader, click and drag up or down to assign the amount of modulation. You can see as I move my mouse around Equator, the knobs light up yellow, indicating to me that these are parameters that can be mapped. I'm gonna go into the bit crasher effect here and map this left fader to the drive knob. So now as I play the notes and raise or lower the level of this fader, I get a varying degree of overdrive. And notice that I don't lose any of the inherent gesture functionality when I enter MIDI mode. It's all still there. Continuing down the controller, we have the XY pad, which is mappable in both expression and MIDI modes and will give you control over two separate parameters with a single gesture. As we move our finger up and down along the Y axis, we control one assigned modulation or modulations, and the same goes for left and right along the X axis. It's a lot like controlling two faders at once, but instead of being one dimensional, we now have two dimensions connected to one gesture, and you can create some very cool effects by creatively using the XY pad. Some presets will already have parameters mapped to the XY pad, and we can access that mapping in the same way we did for the faders. Let's navigate to preset number 62, Big Polysynth Keys, to investigate further. Click on the Rise Control section of Equator and then select the vertical control here on the left. When we do so, you can see that it's already mapped to quite a few things, which we can identify because they light up. It looks like we've got the resonance on filter one and the levels on all three oscillators and the amp envelope as well. By clicking on the horizontal control, we can see that it's mapped to the width of oscillator one and two, the cutoff of filter one, 
and the level of envelope two. As I move my finger around the XY pad, you can see these parameters being adjusted in real time. The last two groups of buttons on the Seaboard that you'll need to know about are the selectors at the top and at the bottom. The ones above the touch faders will navigate through the different presets in Equator, and the ones at the bottom under the XY pad will transpose up and down the octaves. I will go into much more detail on how to properly audition presets in Equator and mapping both the hardware and the software as we move through the course, but this should be a useful first look at how everything works.